Hello everyone, I'm Xu Fen from Chinese Academy of Sciences. Today I'm going to introduce our research work, Cooper, testing the binding code of scripting languages with co-op mutation. It's a joint work with researchers from Qianxin and Penn State University. As we all know, scripting languages is widely useful and powerful. It's easy to learn and develop. Nowadays, scripting languages are integrated into document processing programs. For example, JavaScript code is integrated into PDF and HTML. VBA code is integrated into Office document. In these programs, embedded script code are usually used to manipulate the content elements of a document. Vulnerabilities in these embedded scripting languages are very dangerous. Attackers can exploit vulnerabilities in these programs to execute RBC code and take control of the system. And every year, many vulnerabilities are discovered in embedded scripting system. So it's essential for us to design an effective method to find the bugs in embedded script code. First of all, let's look into the interlocks of document processing programs. The input contains two parts. Native objects represent figures, texts, and even annotations. Script code contains scripting languages like JavaScript code here. The program also has two components to process inputs. They have native code to handle native objects and use language interpreter to execute script code. To connect two different components, these programs usually have a binding layer to do translation. However, the binding layer is too complicated to be 100% correct, and the bugs are inevitable. Previous work like 5Cardo only focuses on mutating the script code, which may miss complicated bugs. We take a vulnerability discovered by Cooper to demonstrate our concept. It's a heap overflow in Adobe Acrobat. Attackers can use this vulnerability to run a basic code remotely. It's so severe that we were awarded with $2,500 bounty for this particular vulnerability. And it had been patched by Adobe before our paper submission. Then let's see how to trick this vulnerability. First of all, in native objects, we must insert one X4 element into Fender's wide server drive. Then in script code, we must utilize JavaScript code to change the zoom type of the document to drive W. So as you can see, to, this, to trick this vulnerability, we must mutate both native objects and script code. And a traditional one-dimension mutation father cannot find this sort of vulnerability. In spite of this vulnerability, we wanted to design a new solution to discover this sort of vulnerability related to both native objects and the script code. Our solution is cooperative mutation. It's very straightforward. We mutate both native objects and the script code in cooperative manner. So we come to the problem, how to achieve cooperative mutation. First of all, we need to infer the relationship between native objects and the script code. And then we use the inferred relationship to get a mutation in both sides. Specifically, if a scripting API has a potential connection with some objects in a document, we will assign these objects a high priority for mutation. Otherwise, we just randomly choose some objects for mutation. All of our method is straightforward. There are also several challenges to be solved. The first challenge is how to infer the relationship between native objects and the script code. Once we have the relationship, we need to solve the second challenge, how to use the inferred relationship to get a mutation. However, when we solve these two challenges, we encounter a new problem that there are so many native objects. That means 
whoever have a huge search space for information relationship and guiding mutation is not doable. To solve this problem, we need to reduce the search space. So how to reduce the search space? We plan to category all native objects into different classes according to their semantic feature. So let's come to our challenge zero. How to class relative objects into semantic similar classes? The next figure prints an overview of our solution. It has three components. The first component is object clustering. It clusters a large number of ob native objects into a small number of object classes, according to their semantic feature. Once we have object classes, we need to infer the relationship between object classes and the scripting API. This is the purpose of our second component, the relationship inference. This component uses a statistic method to infer the relationship. Finally, we come to the third component, the relationship guided mutation. In this component, we use the inferred relationship to guide mutation. Then I will show what components in detail. The first part of our, of our solution is object clustering. An object usually consists of some attributes. Each attribute is a pair of name and object. Through so our observation, the name of object, of object usually carries some semantic information. So in the first step, we class relative objects with their names. It's very simple. We we'll just put objects with different leading names in different categories. However, in some color cases, clustering objects by their name may not be correct. To get a fine green object classes, we split and merge object classes with attributed similarity. Specifically, we we'll use that formula to calculate the similarity between object classes. If the similarity is less than the threshold value, we split a big class into several small ones. If the similarity is greater than the threshold value, we merge these small classes into a bigger one. Through these two steps, we finally get a set of fine-grained object classes. The second part of our solution is relationship reinference. We take two steps to infer the relationship. In the first step, we do execution logging for all samples and divide the name into two sets, success set and failure set. Specifically, we prepare a testing code and insert the testing code into the orange sample. Then we use the application to open a new sample. If the testing code successfully finds related elements, we put the orange sample into success set. Otherwise, if the testing code cannot find the related elements, we we'll produce error. We we'll put an orange sample into failure set. So through this first step, we have divided the word samples into success set and failure set. After we divided the word samples into success set and failure set, we we'll use statistical method to infer the relationship between object classes and scripting API. And finally, we get a relation map. As you can see from the map, the success rate is the percentage of samples that contain this class of objects in the success set. The failure rate is the same percentage in failure set. And the difference is the difference between success rate and failure rate. We think the diff value, value represents the strength of the relationship between object classes and scripting API. In the second part of our solution, we have got the relationship map between object classes and scripting API. In this part, we will utilize the relationship map to get a mutation. First of all, we determine a target API group. Then we use a traditional method to generate a script code. For native objects, we get a seed sample and select objects in this sample for mutation. Specifically, we refer to the relation map and design algorithm to calculate the mutation probability for each object in seed sample. In general, 
The mutation probability is positively correlated with the strength of the relationship. Then we select some objects with mutation probability and mutated selected objects in three mutation strategies. Finally, we synthesize the mutated sample and script code together and produce a final input. So that's all of our solution. For implementation, we developed the Cooper in 4,300 lines of Python code. And Cooper has utilized some open source library. In particular, it uses PDF2 Python library to pass PDF format. Use zip file and XML Python library to pass word format. For script generation, we utilize Domato and improve it with block level template. Cooper currently supports two formats. PTF and what? It's notable that Cooper is extensible and portable. We can easily add some new features to Cooper and can also, and can also apply Cooper to other document formats with limited and manual efforts. Then I'm going to talk about Cooper's evaluation. We apply, we apply Cooper to their world program to find bugs and we compared the capabilities of bug bounding and edge funding in different configurations and tools. We apply Cooper to three real world programs, Adobe Acrobat, Fox Reader, and Microsoft Word. In four months, we totally found 134 previous annual bugs and got 33 CV numbers, and the 59 bugs have been fixed. We are totally awarded with $22,000 bounty all these vulnerabilities are related to Lanty API in E9 objects. We have applied different configurations on Adobe Acrobat and recorded their bug funding history in one week. As we can see from this figure, Cooper 4 found 18 bugs in one week, which is the most among all configurations. This is our proof of our concept that the cooperative mutation is essential to find the bugs in binding code. We also do the experiments on focused reader. The result is similar to Adobe Acrobat. Cooper 4 always find the most bug. To test the IG funding ability, we apply all configurations to Adobe Acrobat and record their IG funding history in one week. We record both scripts coverage and native coverage. As we can see from these two figures, Cooper 4 can find the most in both types of coverage. We also do the edge funding experiments on Fox Reader and Microsoft Word. Their result is similar to Adobe Acrobat. Cooper 4 always find the most coverage. Their results can also be a proof of our concept. That cooperative mutation is essential for finding bugs in binding code. In conclusion, we propose cooperative co co mutation to test the binding code of scripting languages. Our system, Cooper, found 134 bugs in Adobe Acrobat, Fox Reader, and Microsoft Word, and received 33 CV numbers and $22,000 bounty. And Cooper is now open sourced at this website. Thanks for listening. I'm ready for questions.